So three NLP techniques or tips um, for constructive feedback. And I'm actually going to combine it with neuroscience and positive psychology, because why would I not? It's kind of my specialty to combine all three of them, which places me in a unique position as an NLP trainer. So I've trained over two and a half thousand people around the world in small immersion seminars, mostly in NLP, on Bali, in Los Angeles, in Amsterdam, in Mexico. And so this is what I've learned over time, sort of figuring things out, how to best work with my students. Now, so there's a few things important to understand before I give you those three tips, okay? So when people give feedback, it tends to be critical. And so that gives the other person a negative emotion. So from a neuroscience point of view, what happens is when we experience a negative emotion, we, we start to kind of shut down. That would be maybe a little bit extreme, but we become less flexible often. We actually become less open-minded. And so we kind of close off to new ideas, new innovation, learning. This is not a good place to learn. So what happens is, is that someone gives us feedback in order to teach us something, and that's not how you teach. Teaching doesn't work in negative emotion. Teaching works in places of curiosity and flexibility and fun and trying things out and allowing for a safe space for failure, right? So that is a piece. So you need to give positive emotions, but you also need to give feedback at the same time. So a good way to start is by going, okay, what I really liked about what you did is, uh, is this, and then you list specifics. Yeah, so what specifically, who specifically, how specifically are elements of what you really liked, right? Then you also, then you flip it to what specifically, who specifically, and how specifically you would like for improvement to come. So you could say, you know what, what I think could use improvement or where you could expand your abilities is by focusing on this, on this, on this. And now I mentioned doing it with specifics, but sometimes if you want to give people more flexibility to bring in their own self, so it's like you leave it a little bit uh, up to chance for people to develop and learn themselves and not always have to go in every single detail about what they should do instead. You can also be more general. I think what I think there could be improvement is to talk in a way that it will attract more customers rather than just the customers between age 18 and age 25. Or if we actually make the project a little bit simpler, then it's easier to navigate and understood. So can you make it 30% more simple? So that, that could be a way of handling this, okay? The second way, uh, the second NLP technique that I use to give constructive feedback is, is by going um, to give options. NLP is about giving people options in communication. Not options of uh, <laughs> pass or fail. No, here are five options of what I'd like to see instead. So there's also, as you can hear, no critique in there. I am just giving five options of what I'd like to have instead, where I can see improvement, um, instead of like, and, and make it then collaborative and more, you, you teach the constructive feedback rather than criticize the constructive feedback. And the last um, technique that I'd like to give you for constructive feedback, this is also a really good one. If you know that you have to give uh, constructive feedback in a personal meeting, in a business meeting, and you could actually prepare for it. Well, what you could do is what people tend to do when they prepare for constructive feedback is that they do it from their own perception. What do I think that that other person wants to hear or should hear? Or maybe you're secretly experiencing a negative emotion of your own where you can kind of go, well, I'm angry that that person didn't execute things the way that I wanted them to. And so what you need to flip is it's not about the, the meaning of your communication, 
is not what you intend to communicate. The meaning of your communication is the response that you get, right? So, it, it, so what you need to do is you step into the shoes of the other person. You'd be their age, you'd be having their experience level, and you also would be spending, let's say someone spent four months on the project, and you don't want to be yelling at them because they spent four months on the project. So if you step into their shoes and you feel what they would feel and hear and see what they would hear and see, and you would have their map of the world and you would in essence become them, how would you want that other person to talk to you? Right? And so that is a real good way to prepare for the communication. If you have a hard time to step into that person's shoes because you're experiencing a negative emotion that makes that too difficult, what you can also do is dissociate first. Meaning you watch yourself and the other person, let's say on a movie screen and from a place of non-emotion, like you're a scientist, you disconnect from that version of yourself on that screen, you disconnect also from that person and then go, okay, what logically, what's, what is going on here and how should I communicate that without using angry and critiquing in statements. And it's okay to be specific about what consequences should be if it doesn't work, but still be really careful that you don't phrase that. If you don't do that, I will punish you. Again, negative emotions. So you need to communicate that in more objective, less violent, less judgmental ways. You could say, you know what, this project is really important for us to complete because the stakes are high for all of us, you know, to, to help this company uh, reach the sales numbers and for all of us to get a bonus. You get the idea to, to sort of communicate it that way. And so that's my take on three NLP tips or techniques, um, the three NLP techniques to give constructive feedback. And so if you're interested in NLP and really would like to receive a free product, a visualization using positive psychology and NLP for goal setting and navigating obstacles, I'd be more than happy to send it to you. Uh, just contact my back office at globalnlptraining.com. You can ask any information that you want about the training, um, the online training or the training in uh, the NLP training in Bali, Los Angeles, Amsterdam, and Mexico. See you around.